For a while now, I've been posting videos of my new intake. You've seen teaser pictures, you've seen some videos, and a lot of you have asked, what did I do? Where did I get the parts? How did I make this? If that's what you wanna know, you've come to the right video. I'm gonna teach you how. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Cameron, and this is Audi C7 Owners. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to make your own high-performance intake that actually doesn't suck. Well, it sucks. It just sucks a ton of air, but it doesn't suck in performance. So I've done a bunch of testing on this. If you're curious about testing with IATs, heat, things like that, check out the description below. I've got a video there. It's a really cool informative video where we kind of bust some myths related to intakes in the uh, 30T supercharged engine. But this video is all about this intake, how to build it, and how much it costs. So this will take you just a few minutes to put together. It'll cost you between $150 to $170, depending on where you get your parts and how you source your materials. It's a super easy DIY friendly job, and it really, really works. I've got it for the C7A6. This will be the same for C7A7. I've got the filter position right in front of the ram air intake, so it's getting super cool air from outside of the engine bay directly onto it. And the cool thing about it is that as it moves through, that air circulates around the filter and the heat on the backside isn't that much hotter. In the test that we did, the air temperature on the backside was only three or four degrees warmer than the air hitting it directly on this side. So we have it to where we've got direct air going into the filter. There's a velocity stack in there to help smooth the air as it goes into the four inch diameter pipe. And then that constricts down to the OEM throttle body. Cool thing about this one, eventually I'll be able to swap this coupler out with a different one when I get an aftermarket throttle body set up. So it's modifiable to your needs. If you've got a B8.5 S4 or an SQ5, the pipes that you might use, the uh, actual couplers and the pipe here, you might need something different for your engine bay because our ram airs are different, the room in the engine bay is different, so you're just gonna have to take this and then kind of figure out what you need. I'm gonna be installing one of these on a B8.5 S5, and once we get that done and know exactly what the best setup is, I'll modify the uh, description with some information on that. I might even put a pinned comment so you guys know what to look for there. But this is just something that you guys can use as a guide. So I'm going to take this intake off. I'm going to put it on the bench. I'm going to take it apart and show you what each part is. And as always, with anything I do like this, in the description below, you're going to find a link to all the parts so you can go buy this stuff yourself. Let's go check it out. All right, let's go over the parts of the intake and we're gonna start from the front, work our way back. So the front here is all one kit from a company called Blocks Racing. And a lot of people have been using these filters and having really good results with them. They're high flowing filters, they're dry filters. I've really enjoyed it so far, haven't had any issues with it. But what comes in this kit is obviously your filter and it's got a nice giant opening here and it's closed off on the bottom. Then it's got a four inch velocity stack and you can see how that connects to the metal pipe on the end and it comes with the coupler and the worm clamps. So I put that on, make sure it's nice and smooth and flush with the aluminum pipe, get that tightened down. Then this will go over the velocity stack and then use the giant worm clamp there to tighten it down, make sure it's on there nice and even. From there, we've got our aluminum pipe. This is a four inch inner diameter aluminum pipe from Spectre. So it's a little bit pricier. This pipe here was $60 and it is got a 40 to five degree bend in it. And it's a seven inch leg that moves back to the silicone coupler. It's a four inch to three inch reducer. This is for an OEM throttle body setup. You can find these that have a four inch to whatever you need to fit basically any kind of throttle body you can put on the 3OT. So you just got to know the opening you need and buy the correct adapter. So it's got a 45 degree bend. It's four ply. And the only other thing we had to add to it here, this is the only modification we really had to make to anything, is adding this port for the PCV vent hose to connect into the intake, similar to your OEM intake. So all these parts all said and done, I think right now price out at $170 for a four inch custom intake that performs extremely well and sounds absolutely wicked. An important thing to remember whenever you're building this intake is that the silicone piece that connects to your throttle body, which in turn connects to the metal pipe, will not have a connection for the breather hose that comes off of your PCV. And that's the little line that connects to the back of your OEM intake. So we're doing completely custom. We don't have a custom silicone piece you know, to put anything there. So we need to make something. So this is a donor piece of silicone here. We're gonna use it as a sacrificial piece to show you guys what to do here. You can see I've marked where it needs to be. So you know, this is just hypothetical. This isn't where you would put it on your car. You wanna see exactly where you want to install a barb. This is a vibrant uh, barb fitting that is designed to go into this and connect without any leaks or uh, vacuum issues. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole through here and then we're gonna get this installed. So let me move my camera to a tripod and I'll show you how we do it. 
All right, if you choose to go with a different barb fitting, you're gonna need to know, you know exactly what size tools you're gonna need to do it, but I'm using the Vibrant one. There'll be a link in the description below. Uh, what we need for that is a deep half inch socket. That's for the lock nut that we have on the top here. You need something to be able to reach in and grab the bottom of it. And so I've got an adjustable wrench for that. And then after that, you're gonna need a drill with a 9 30 seconds inch uh, drill bit to drill the hole. So this is super simple. We find where we're going to be drilling. Uh, move your fingers apart so that you don't drill into your fingers, but you wanna create tension. Get it on there and then just drill the hole straight through. After you've done that, you obviously wanna make sure you clean up any of the debris from drilling the hole into the pipe. We'll blow it out with air on the real pipe that we're gonna to use to put onto the intake. But once you have that, you need to take off the actual locking nut, take off the large washer. And then here you can see there's a little gasket at the base. That's what's gonna seal this to the actual silicone. So you're gonna take this from the inside, push it up through the hole, push it all the way through to where the threads are exposed like that. Put your washer down. And then we're going to thread on the locking nut. And once you get down a little bit, it's gonna get super tight. And that's where you're gonna need your half inch socket as well as your adjustable wrench to hold it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this tightened down. Okay, so it's now, it's good and snug. It's not going anywhere. We've got a really good seal here so that we're not gonna have any kind of a vacuum leak issue. And you can connect that vacuum line that comes from your PCV onto your new intake and have everything function as normal. To install this on the car, I would have everything attached as one piece. Make sure everything's good and tight and not moving. Get all this good and tight. And then I would just go ahead and put this onto the throttle body. Make sure you get your worm clamp connector for the throttle body on there. Push this on there, maneuver this onto the throttle body, tighten it down, get it positioned correctly. Now, since this doesn't have anything to stabilize it to hold it in place right now, it will sag just a little bit, but I haven't had any issues with it holding there. I do try and plan on coming out with some kind of a mount that will keep this stable and connected to the engine. I'll update you guys with that once I uh, work with somebody to come up with something for that. But for now, I'm running as is and I really like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go put this onto the car. So I need to give credit where credit's due. I did not come up with this intake system. This intake system was designed by JM on Instagram and a lot of you guys might know him because he's the one that's got the stage one E40 water meth A6 and the tens. No crank pulling, no supercharger pulley upgrades. Stage one tune from 034 Motorsport. Uh, he's got this intake that he developed and came up with and tested himself. Uh, once again, he's got uh, water meth, he's running E40, he's got test pipes and he's got a uh, slightly uh, larger throttle body. But f to be a stage one tune, even with all that, it's still incredibly impressive to be in the tens. Now he knows these cars in and out. He's one of those guys that is just incredibly technical and knows how to read data logs and his whole thing is optimization. And so that's how he came up with this intake. I've got a couple data logs here. And the first data log is from one of the most popular intakes on the market. I'm not gonna name the company by name in this video. If you guys follow me on any of the Facebook pages and whatnot, you'll probably be able to guess who this is. But let me bring up this chart right now. So if you look at this, what you wanna pay attention to is the purple line. So there's, there's three lines that we're measuring here. The gray line is the engine RPMs and you can see it peaks on this uh, wide open throttle pull. So it gets all the way to red line before it drops off when they let off the gas. What you can see is the pink or red line, that's your barometric pressure. The purple line is the velocity of the airspeed post throttle body. So the velocity of your air going into your supercharger after the throttle body. And you can see on this one how the purple line drops steadily the entire pull and especially at RP or at a red line, it just completely kind of falls there. So 
Here is another data log chart, and that is with the same intake setup as I have on his car. And you can see how that line hardly drops at all, the purple line on that one. His velocity hardly drops at all. And that just goes to show you how much better flowing this intake is over one of the out-of-the-box intakes. So that right there just goes to show you that this actually does perform extremely well. Um, you know, you can spend the big money and get uh, you know, big name brands. And if you're going to do that, the two best intakes out of the box that actually perform similar to this would be Integrated Engineering and 034 Motorsports. After that, I wouldn't recommend any of the other out of the box intakes. I would just say you should build one of these more than likely. Now, yep, it's not got a heat shield, which in my other video I discuss in detail, heat shields don't really do anything in terms of increasing performance. They might direct air to the filter a little bit better and they make your engine bay look pretty, but that's about it. But uh, yeah, in closing, I love this intake. It's been nothing but fun ever since I put it on. I'm so happy. The car overall just feels so much more responsive. I can definitely feel in the upper RPMs. If you have data logging capabilities that allow you to measure the things that I just showed you in those charts, test it out for yourself if you do this. Shoot, whatever intake you have on now, test it out now and see what happens with your current intake and see if you might want to invest in building one of these. Uh, I have those charts there and right now I'll list the two values you need to understand. They're better metric pressure and the velocity post throttle body here, right here somewhere. I'll actually list what they're called so you can look them up. Uh, 034 Motorsport data logging software suite has the ability to do this. VCDS does. Um, Jackal Motorsports might have the ability to do this when they release their data logging software. I'm not sure yet. Once I know for sure, I'll post something in the uh, comments below. But unfortunately, Integrated Engineering's data logging software doesn't do that. So I can't do it on mine yet. But I will in the future. But and as always, guys, thanks for tuning in for another video. I hope this helps a lot of you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, yeah, see you on the next DIY.